This is the first tutorial in a series that covers the dialogue system's cutscene sequences. This tutorial covers the basics of cutscenes. The second covers camera work. The third covers messages used for timing your commands. The fourth covers entry tags. And the fifth covers scrubbing editors such as Unity Timeline, Cinema Director, and Slate. Cutscene sequences are specified using text-based commands for three reasons. They allow you to write without breaking your flow. They're concise and compact. And they cleanly import and export from other applications such as Artisy Draft, Chat Mapper, and Excel. Each node of a conversation lasts as long as its sequence lasts. In this node, we've used the delay command to make that node last for three seconds. And this is what it looks like. We can also use a special keyword end, which is wrapped in two curly braces. This special keyword reflects the length of the dialogue text. It's based on the dialogue text and the dialogue manager's subtitle cares per second and min subtitle seconds. If the dialogue text is 120 characters long and subtitle cares per second is 30, then the value of end will be 120 divided by 30, or four seconds. The dialogue system ships with a large library of built-in sequencer commands. You can also write your own custom commands. The list of built-in commands is in the manual. If a dialogue entry node's sequence field is blank, it will use the dialogue manager's default sequence. We can see here that the default sequence is set to delay and then the end keyword. So it will delay based on the length of the dialogue text. If you want to set a different sequence to use for the default when the player is speaking a line, you can set that in the next field. And you can also set a default sequence to use for response menus. You can use this to play a sequence that runs while the following response menu is visible. If we leave the sequence field blank, it will use the default sequence, as shown here. Let's try a different command. We'll use the camera command to control the camera. The syntax of that command is the camera angle you want to use, who you want to focus the camera on, and the duration that you want to move the camera over to get into that position. We also use another special keyword, default, which at runtime is replaced with the dialogue manager's default sequence. As you'll recall, in this case, it's delay end. Speaker is another special keyword that refers to the actor that is speaking this line, in this case, Private Heart. You can also use audio commands to play audio, but in the case of audio, there's a shortcut. Put your audio clip in a resources folder or asset bundle and drag it to the sequence field. This will automatically enter the command for you. The plus button next to sequence has some options that you can use to specify what command should be used when you drag an audio clip into the field. You can use an at sign to control timing. In this example, we immediately do a close up of the speaker over one second, and then we're going to do a close up of the listener 
at the two second mark. You can see that it does a close up of the speaker, and then at the two second mark, it does an immediate close up of the player. You can also play sequences outside of conversations. We'll add a dialog system trigger, set it to on start, and we'll use the fade command to fade in over two seconds. So at the beginning of the scene, it plays the fade in sequence. And that's it for the first tutorial of this series of cutscene tutorials. The second tutorial will cover camera work in more detail.